to this week's episode of Health and Wealth with Macy Vogel, me, and my confidant, Nate Crosby. Yeah. Macy, we made it from that last episode without being injured, like promised. Yes, we did. But you know what? I have a story for you because this week I was doing a review session with a client of ours. We're going to call her Sarah S. <laughs> and I said, Sarah, did you see the uh, episode on the smoothie we did? And she said, yeah, I saw it. And I said, well, what did you think about it? And she said, huh. Uh, so, Sarah. You know what? I promise this episode will be better. You know why? The smoothie's going to have chocolate in it. Ah. Yeah, but before we get to that, we actually got some response from our last episode here. So okay. a couple questions, uh, a couple comments, and if you don't mind, I want to kind of answer them on the air, if that's okay. okay. So Dear Nate, uh, is it okay to use a credit card to pay off other credit card debt? Obviously last week we talked about debt, right, mm -hmm. and the dangers of a credit card. Right. Do I pay off debt or do I invest and how to do that? Yeah. So personally, I think there's actually nothing wrong with it. You're a grown adult. You can use a credit card how you want. Credit cards can actually be very powerful tools for getting out of debt, just as they are powerful tools for getting in debt. Mm -hmm. A couple of things you want to be careful of, Macy, um, when using a credit card to pay off debt. A lot of times you, you can, there are spe uh, special cards out there that are transfer cards, essentially, and they offer a 0% interest for 12 months or 18 months or however long that you qualify for. Um, so yes, they can be very useful for paying off that debt and not paying interest on it while you're paying off the debt. There are a couple, two traps that you tend to fall into with those. Mm -hmm. One is you have to pay attention to the transfer fee. Most of them will be fairly low. They're, it's usually about 3% of the balance that you're transferring over. Right. So if I have got a $4,500 credit card debt and I transfer over, I'm going to pay about $135 in fees just to get it transferred over there. Now, if I'm paying 18 or 23 percent on that balance that I'm transferring over, I'm going to end up saving money uh, on the long term by not having uh, any interest accredited to it for 12 months or 18 months. But the other trap that fall, you fall into is you have to make your payments on time. If I transfer that balance over, they're going to ding me a fee for transferring over, and if I fail to make that first month's payment on time, typically they will start charging you interest right away, yep. and it's not very friendly interest. Not very friendly interest, and you've basically just kind of blown the whole thing, right? You did. You put yourself in the board debt. Yeah. Okay. So, not good. Next enough. question. The next question. This one is to both of us. Michelle C. writes, I'm not going to use their last name for it. Obviously, privacy. I think last show's smoothie did not taste that great because you forgot to add the banana. You listed the banana as an ingredient <laughs> on the smoothie, but did not add it to the blender. <laughs> And Macy, yeah. we knew that ahead of time. We did know that. We tried to trick you, but you guys are you good. fell for it. So, Michelle, well done for paying attention. Please send us your address, and we will send you a Crosby Advisory t-shirt that I promise is so soft, it will literally be the softest t-shirt you've ever worn. Like Nate says, it's a great sleeping shirt. It is. All right, number three. Mike R. writes, Nate, what type of product do you use for your hair? Well, that's a great question, Mike. Um, you know, for a long time, mostly most of my life, I have used LA Lux, and the one that I go to is Extreme Hold. Why? Because I want extreme control. And is it an extreme hold? <laughs> LA Lux can be purchased by the gallon or for a couple Here bucks. We can. <laughs> for it. Really at any fine retail store such as Walmart. Fine retail store, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Macy, on Good the questions. Show. If you ever have yeah. any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And you can do so by visiting CrosbyAdvisory.com. Yes, or our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Crosby Advisory Group. Awesome. So what's today's uh, smoothie? Okay, today's smoothie, as Nate said, a chocolate-covered cherry protein smoothie. Um, the ingredients, Michelle, pay close attention, are 12 ounces of almond milk, 3 quarters of a cup of cherries. We use frozen cherries. Um, you don't have to use frozen cherries, but I think it'd be better for the thickness. We also added ice, as you can see. Um, one tablespoon of chia seeds and two tablespoons of chocolate protein powder. I would also like to note that we are using organic whey grass-fed chocolate protein. If I can interrupt there, it yes, makes me can. think that uh, this one might be actually way better. <laughs> whey, get it? Yeah. Okay, and um, the brand is The Garden of Life, if, if anyone would like to know that. Also, I'm, we're going to try this because I just want to. We're going to use some cacao powder as well to enhance the chocolate of the smoothie. Just a little bit. So, without further ado, let's start with the 12 ounces of almond milk. All right, here's where you spill it on me. I'm not going to spill it on you. Okay. Three quarters cup of cherries. What type pitted. of cherries are these? Pitted? Yes, pitted yeah. cherries. Pits would be bad, right? That would not be good for your smoothie. 
Um, there's your two tablespoons of chocolate protein. Okay. And your one tablespoon of chia seeds. And shout out to Salina Insurance Group for the chip clip. Yeah. Just put a little bit in here. Just, you know, whatever. Right, eyeball it, huh? We're eyeballing it, yeah. Yeah, just a little sprinkle. Okay. Maybe suffice. We'll see how that goes. All right. All right. As always, put the lid on that. Yeah, we're going to try and cut this so you don't have to listen to the whole blender. Definitely thicker since last time. Yeah. yeah. Almost like ice cream. Cheers. Cheers. I'm a fan. I'm not. Oh, yeah. Strike out. I don't really like chocolate covered cherries that much, though. So. That's true. Well, let's go on to the Roth IRA. Okay. If we were, because that's our today's topic is the Roth IRA. Yes. Uh, why did I pick the Roth IRA? Mostly because of you. And what I mean by that is. Um, while I believe the Roth IRA is potentially a perfect for many people because I think we all should have some bucket of free money, free income, when I say free, tax-free money of income in retirement. Um, and it's perfect, can be perfect for every age, assuming that you qualify. But it is also a great tool for uh, millennials. Why? Because we're young. Because you're young. And what's the one thing about investing that you can't get back? Your time. Time, right? Time to grow and compound. So. If you're five years away from retirement um, and um, starting a Roth IRA would give you a little bit of uh, tax-free money, that's great. Um, why is that important? I, I think it's um, important for retirees to be able to diversify how their money is going to be taxed. If we throw everything into a traditional 401k, uh, which is great, it's been a nice accumulator over the years, but if we don't have our ability to control the tax bracket, uh, our tax bracket in the future, then we are at the mercy of whatever the federal government says our tax rate is. Now, if we have a bucket of cash that is tax-free, we can decide how much to pull from taxable accounts and how much to pull from tax-free accounts. Mm -hmm. So let's just do a little calculation here for you. Okay. Macy, how old are you? I'm 28. 28. So we're going to take you to 65. That's a long time. That's so far away. So 37 years. So let's say in 2019 that you're going to put $6,000 into your Roth IRA. Okay. And we're going to continue to do $6,000. We're not going to adjust it for inflation, although the IRAs are typically do that over the years. They allow you an increasing amount that you can put into it. But we're going to put in $6,000 per year as our payment. And we are going to go for 37 years. And the interest rate we're going to earn, the one I'm going to use is 6%. We're going to assume that you're in a moderate investment account. And I know that actual returns can be more or less favorable. Uh, that's important to know. Uh, but 6% return is probably something I personally would expect in a moderate investment account. Okay. So we're going to use a 6% interest rate. And the future value of that is what? $763,608.71. All a couple other reasons why the Roth IRA is a fantastic tool, in my opinion. Uh, we talked about the tax-free benefit of it. Um, you don't actually have to start pulling what are called required minimum distributions from a traditional IRA when I reach the age of 70 and a half. If I haven't started pulling money out, the government's going to say you're forced to. Uh, basically, what they're saying is we've delayed taxation on this money long enough and I'll start pulling it out so we can tax. Mm -hmm. The Roth IRA doesn't re require you to do that uh, so that uh, if you're in retirement and you're 70 years old and you're continu continuing to work and you don't need that money, you can let it grow and let it compound and, and let it do its thing, which makes the Roth IRA a fantastic tool for passing money on to um, children. Children, children, right? Absolutely. Um, the other thing about the Roth IRA that's nice, especially for young people, it, it is semi-liquid. What I mean by that is a traditional IRA, which um, gives me potentially the ability to make a tax deduction, has restrictions on accessing that money before 59 and a half. Mm -hmm. If I access that money from a traditional IRA prior to 59 and a half, I'm going to face a 10% penalty plus any taxes that are due right. at that time, right? Well, the Roth IRA does also have a limitation uh, for actually accessing the growth of the account before age 59 and a half. However, you can always pull out of a Roth IRA what you put into it, your principal. So if I put $5,000 into it and two years later uh, it grew to $7,000 and I need that $5,000 out for emergency, I could technically pull it out without facing any penalties on it. That's nice. That's mm -hmm. good. Because the one thing that I can tell you being a young person is that throughout your life, uh, life is going to throw curveballs at you. Definitely. Right? And there's yeah. going to be times when you're going to need the money um, 
and not have access to it. And right. with the Roth IRA, at least you have some access to it. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree. A Roth IRA, lastly, I would say, or actually two more things. A Roth IRA is great for uh, somebody who's a long-term investor because it allows it to grow without being taxed. But also, if you're a trader uh, and you like to buy and sell securities, the Roth IRA is a great tool for doing that because you're not facing any taxation within the account. So I could buy Apple at one price and sell it at a higher price and I'm not paying any capital gains on that. Oh, neat. So, which you would if you were in a, a taxable account. And then the last thing about the Roth IRA that's probably, in my opinion, maybe the most overlooked is when it comes time to start taking money from that account, income from a Roth IRA does not count against Social Security when the federal government decides if your Social Security should be taxed or not. Whereas distributions from a um, 401k or a traditional IRA actually are counted as income against Social Security. So you can actually take money from a Roth IRA and not increase um, the taxation on the so Social Security benefit that you're receiving. Oh, wow. Assuming that you are receiving Social Security. Yeah, wow. That's great to know. Yeah, I mean, Roth IRAs are fantastic. Not everyone qualifies, so what's the, uh, why wouldn't you qualify? There's an income threshold to that. If you make too much money, um, they're not going to allow you to actually make contributions to a Roth IRA. There are other tax-free buckets that we can go to at that time, but um, the Roth for most people is the simplest. Mm -hmm. cool. Good to know. Macy, any questions before we go? I don't think I have any questions. Sarah, I hope that this one um, rates a little bit higher than last week. I think it does, sir. Under the I don't know, right there. <laughs>